So to start off this episode, and before we get into what we're even gonna do today, I wanna talk about this game concept that before I thought you couldn't really manipulate it, but I think you actually can, which is whether or not colonists will fall in love with each other. Seconds after I booted up the game today, I got this event, New Lovers, and Mining and Intellect are now lovers, which is amazing. I explained why it's good in the last episode, but basically they just get a bunch of positive mood bonuses because they're in love. And one thing I did, which wasn't really on purpose, was I had Mining have a sleeping spot next to Intellect's researching table. And so lots of the time, mining and intellect are in the same room together, which means they'll be talking more. And I think that gives a higher chance that they will eventually fall in love. But yeah, here's a bird's eye view of the base. And I'm not currently extremely happy with the way it's laid out. We are against the mountains, so we do have good protection if we get attacked from the north. But we have to wall off a lot of stuff, and we don't really have any strategic defensive advantage. As far as like later on, we can get attacked by sappers, and sappers will attack from any side. And so I'm thinking in this episode, we're going to send out a scout squad to trade with a nearby faction, but then we might also look to move our base somewhere else. Down to the southwest in our territory, we have an overgrown colossus, and we're actually just going to take this thing out. We could tame it, and we could actually harvest wood from it every once in a while, but it requires a 9 handling skill, and animals only has 8. And since we're going to leave this area pretty soon, I don't think we'll have time to tame it. So yeah, we're just going to kill it. I'm kind of curious what it drops. I think it does drop some meat, and we can always use some extra meat because we do have a lot of mouths to feed. And I think the plan right now is we're just going to kill all the animals in this zone, at least the ones that are easy to kill. Like this overgrown colossus is actually not as tanky as it looks. And we knocked it down after 14 shots. One thing you guys may have noticed in the last episode is there's these ancient crypto sleep caskets. And inside these caskets, there's usually enemies. So we built a trap system and laid down four steel spike traps, which should be enough because there's only three of them. And yep, Wang, Tito, and Kitty are in the caskets and wow tito actually walked over two okay that might not be good hopefully kitty can only take one trap yep okay one trap got kitty and here comes wang now and wang's dead i was hoping that we wouldn't kill them all but that's all right they did end up dropping some gold and they dropped three guns which is way better than anything we have access to right now we're gonna give shooting this battle rifle and holy cow so artista got an inspiration and created a legendary work she made this legendary steel small sculpture which provides 400 beauty that's actually pretty cool if we do sell it off it's got a market value of 800 we probably will do that because it's gonna add a lot of wealth to our colony like right now we're at 40k wealth and that's a bit scary because that means we're gonna start getting way more terrifying events and like we also got some gold from killing those people in the ancient tome earlier we've been mining all the uranium too and uranium i think is actually kind of pricey yeah six bucks a pop we're gonna try to get rid of all of our valuable materials and we're gonna send stone on a trading mission before we leave we're gonna try to take on this mega sloth and i think this might be a bad idea but we are out of food completely and we actually tagged a few times it's not really slowed at all though i'm a bit scared here wait we actually tagged in the head that's good it's moving only at 85% now. I'm surprised it doesn't charge at us. We've hit it so many times, and each time we shoot at it, I think there's like a 10% chance it revenges. There we go. It's finally revenging. It's slowed, though, pretty badly. Because, yeah, its health is down to like half, and we got it. Holy crap. That's going to be a lot of meat and leather from killing that thing. Alrighty, well, our caravan arrived at Fenron. We're going to try to sell them pretty much all we can, like all these components. Yeah, we want components later, but we have no use for them right now. And stockpiling them is just going to increase our wealth, so no thank you. We're going to literally just sell everything we can. We want to sell all this uranium. It's pretty heavy, and right there we're up to 1744. Plasteel. We've been making hops, too, to brew beer, but I think we're going to wait to brew beer until we move to our new settlement. What I will say though is these guys do actually have some good weapons like they have a charge SMG and a charge lance I think we definitely want the SMG. It's a really short range weapon The charge lance is a really long range one if we can't afford both though It would be nice to pick both of them up and we do have a lot of stuff to sell like we got a good amount of gold We'll sell all of our sculptures and the legendary one too And yeah after selling pretty much everything off we can almost perfectly afford the charge SMG and the charge lance We do still have this psychic insanity lance left and this Arcotech eye which is a super good late game eye but the only thing is it's gonna be hard to install because we don't have that good a medical right now i mean i guess that's not necessarily true medical is up to 10 medical now if we did find some good medicine i bet we could perform surgery and install that arcotech eye on like shooting and that would improve his accuracy by a lot i think because yeah the arcotech eye is like the best eye in the game you can't make those so maybe we want to hold on to that so i think it's time we finally move bases and we're sending stone out on a scouting mission all the way down here towards this orange swamp and we're gonna settle pretty close to these guys 
guys. It's gonna piss them off, but they already hate us anyways, so we don't really care about their opinion. And I believe this is a large hill tile. I'm actually kind of liking this layout. We have a huge mount up here to the top right, and we can put a choke point on this lake. We could actually make a pretty effective defense out of that. Before we move though, we have a quest to construct a monument. So we've been working on that. It took a lot of steel. I think it was like 650 steel to make this. And then we needed to make granite tile. So we had to cut a bunch of granite blocks. And there we go. We built the monument and got the quest done. Shooting now has the title of Esquire. It looks like he's becoming quite the diva. He will not clean anymore, which is okay. We have plenty of people that can clean. And he wants to be covered in apparel appropriate to his title. There's only certain clothing that he wants to wear now and i'm sure he's having a negative mood for wearing a tribal wear oh man he has a lot of negative moodlets and yeah negative seven for non-esquire specific apparel he wants a bedroom area that has 16 tiles in it that's okay we can do that all floor double bed okay whatever that's easy when he needs a throne room which probably could have been the monument we just built because it needs to have a throne in it it needs to be 24 tiles floored and have a couple of brassiers in it apparently he won't eat like raw meat anymore too but He'll eat like simple meals, so that's fine. And he can now call a trooper squad. Well, that's kind of cool. We got an event where we're now under attack by a bunch of manhunting cobras. And we now have a bit of a defense choke point set up. Forgot to open it though. But yeah, now it's open. And these guys are all going to come in our choke point, I guess. This is why I wanted the heavy SMG. Because it's really good at short range. And having a short range weapon is really nice for this choke point. Yeah, we're just shredding these guys. Crafting actually can get over here and get in the, on the action. Oh no, is the Cobra going to make it to our traps? Nope, he's not. And that's the last one. We got them all. But yeah, essentially the way attacks will work in this game is as long as you have some way to get into the base, like there's an option to hold these doors open, and if we keep them open, enemies will use this path to get into the base, unless they're sappers. Sappers will just go through whatever. And that's the main thing I'm worried about with this base is sappers, which is why we're going to move. Earlier we had this event where Social got inspired trade, so we sent her on her own trading mission, and we get a huge bonus for doing a trade here, assuming we do want to trade with these guys, which they don't look like they have any good weapons weapons or really anything we want in general luckily we do have two other factions that we can trade with and fenron actually has an arcotech arm i wonder if we could afford that we brought some tribal wear that we can sell as well as if we sold off all these sculptures that would put us at 1600 we also brought some uranium and a bunch of furs and then actually we have a bunch of muffalo we'll just sell off most of these muffalo because we do have more back at base because yeah i think that architect arm is actually a really good investment mainly because stone's left arm has a scratch scar on it which does not only lower her manipulation down to 93 percent so she does stuff slower and she's like worse at shooting which is bad because she's one of our better shooters well we only have two people that can really shoot one of them being her but she's also our researcher lower manipulation makes her research slower speaking of stone at our new base we're getting attacked by an ebex doe and we're gonna have stone kill it now you may notice stone is shooting while moving and that's because running gun did just get updated literally like probably maybe a couple hours ago and this mod is amazing it allows you to shoot while you're moving but if you're carrying like a really heavy gun you'll be a lot slower some people don't like it and they say it's too op but enemies that do have guns also can use it so i think it's kind of pretty fair and it makes sense that you can shoot while you're moving it's just that if it's toggled on you will be moving a little bit slower depending on like how heavy your weapon is so i think it is balanced out in that way at our main base we got this event that a fearless clutch mother has entered our territory and these things actually have range but hopefully we can okay juke that attack yeah because it was winding up an attack but then we can juke it and run and run and yeah these things are actually really tanky it's just charging now it's not even shooting anymore we hit it a few more times and there it goes. I'm pretty sure when we skin this thing, it's going to give us a lot of really nice leather. I think it's one of the stronger materials you can make armor out of. So unfortunately, we did not get a butcher the Fairless Clutch Mother to see what it drops, as it is now rotting. The reason for that is I forgot about it, because things have been really hectic. You may also notice over here, we got a couple wind turbines set up now. We did research electricity, and we got everyone moved over to the new base. I will say it was quite the process. People were having mental breakdowns left and right. Like, our cook right now is currently having a mental breakdown, which is not good, because we currently have no meals cooked also a day ago a heat wave started and we're starting to see the worst of it it's currently 108 degrees outside and it's nighttime we did however get a cooling system set up and we connected it all with subsurface conduit which is actually a mod for three times the cost of a normal power line you can build them underground and it does take 15 times more work to build which doesn't actually turn out to be that long it's like six seconds versus one or something building a regular power line doesn't even take a second for construction unfortunately for us right now there's no wind blowing and so 
the rooms are going to start heating up pretty quickly, which brings me to another project I've been meaning to work on, which is set up a couple batteries. I don't think we should need more than like two right now. These batteries are not going to help us right now, but when the wind does pick back up, they will start storing power from the wind turbines and we... Okay, a solar flare has begun now, which means our coolers are not going to work during a heat wave. That's always fun. And actually, the solar flare only ended up lasting like a couple hours. It says it should have lasted a day, but I'm not complaining. Sometime later, all the gigantolopes on the map became enraged. Unfortunately, we do not have shooting over here. We just have stone with his sniper rifle, and we got construction over here with the assault rifle. And Gray's coming over here with his bow. Gray was a prisoner that we recruited earlier, and he ended up joining us. And yeah, these guys got all the way through. They're going to hit our spike trap, unfortunately. It's a steel one, and I really don't like using steel for spike traps, but they have really good armor pen. And I actually want to save that steel spike trap for an event that we're about to do. But that's all right. It's just like 35 steel. And yeah, these gigantolopes do not seem to stand much of a chance against our guns. Yep, they're all dead. Well, they're not all dead. We can probably save this female one and tame it. We already do have a male and a female, but extra females are always welcome. Speaking of angry wildlife, there's a horde of colossal arrow fleet that have entered our territory. And these things actually aren't angry right now, but we're gonna shoot at them and I think we might piss them off. And okay, they actually explode. They don't have that much HP. Even like the colossal ones don't seem that tanky. I really don't know what else they're supposed to do with these though. And like, you can skin them for some pretty good leather and stuff. What are you doing, Artistic? Oh, that was actually really close. Artistic almost, well, let's just say her face was about to be a modern art piece. And there we go. Finally one revenged. And oh, that one blew up. It is nice that it's raining though. So the fire is actually being put out because the fire would actually burn their corpses and another one down. After killing and butchering all the arrow fleets and the gigantelopes, we have a bunch of extra arrow fleet meat and a bunch of extra gigantelope meat that we can sell off. As well as we got a bunch of extra arrow fleet fur, which is not that tanky of material. It is a good insulator, but we're going to sell all that off too. And the main thing we want is a few glitter world medicine. That's going to make the operation to install the Arcotech arm and the eye a lot easier. Or maybe we'll just grab all of it. They only have six. Because, yeah, you don't see Glitter World Medicine all that often. That leaves us with 1400 to trade with, and we're going to want to pick up a gear set. They have a flak vest, flak pants, and they have a steel helmet. I think we'll give all that to Stone, so she'll be really tanky, and once we do the operation on her, she should be quite formidable in combat. We're also going to pick her up some EMP grenades, because we're actually about to do an event where we get attacked by mechanoids, and I believe EMP grenades are really good against mechanoids. That did not leave us with a lot of leftover silver, but we do have a lot of animals we could trade off. Like, we got a bunch of extra male donkeys that we don't really need. And then we got a bunch of male mufflo. I don't know if it's worth it to sell these off or to butcher them first. One would assume you'd get more profit from selling them off not dead. But yeah, if you're selling off three donkeys and three mufflo, that's going to give us about 1k silver left over that we can trade with later. Or we could visit Orange Baduro and see if they want to trade with us. They're not that far away. It's literally going to take us like less than 0.1 days. And yeah, just as I thought, these guys are just villagers. They don't really have anything to sell us. But we could actually sell off some of these tribal wear that I forgot to sell earlier and these sculptures too. Doing that's going to bring us up to around 2k silver and with that we're going to head back home. Back at base it looks like plants and artistic are now getting married. Everyone's gathered around to witness the ceremony and this is just like a random thing that will happen if people are in love and that gave everyone that attended the wedding a huge mood boost for 10 days. They get a 20 moodlet for attending a wedding and not to mention now plants and artistic get a 40 bonus moodlet for 30 days. That combined with their permanent 10 bonus moodlet for opinion of my husband or wife should make it so they are not going to be ever having a mental breakdown, at least not any time in the next 30 days. The celebrations were short-lived though as Stone got back to base and we're now going to operate on her. We're using the Glitter World Medicine and we're installing the Arcotech arm on her left arm. Yeah, we're going to get rid of that scarred arm and we're going to replace it with a much better one. Now being that medical's medical skill is 11 and we're using Glitter World Medicine, I don't think there's a very high chance that this fails. And yep, it actually looks like it did succeed. The Arcotech arm is now installed. Her manipulation is 0% right now because she's sedated, but once she does wake up, her manipulation should go way up. And now it looks like we're about to install the eye, which ended up being successful as well. The Glitter World Medicine coming in clutch there, and the left side of Stone's body is going to be Arcotech. We're going to try to find an Arcotech leg as well, and we'll turn her into a, like a half Arcotech, half human hybrid. Stone woke up, but she still is a little bit drowsy from the anesthetic, so we're not going to look at her stats just yet. The main thing is, a while ago we were given a couple quests, worker outsourcing. If we land three colonists to this dude for eight days, we'll get some favor. The people who were sending 
starting out on the mission are melee who is kind of useless i haven't really been focused on leveling up this guy's melee skill at all and it's only at five we're also going to send out gray and squid and one thing you may notice is they both have the trait fast learner when i was originally setting up the game i accidentally made it so everyone in the entire world has the trait fast learner so yeah it was not a coincidence that stone was a fast learner gray is and so is squid squid's a decent artist and we got an event where she just randomly joined us a while ago she's also a quick sleeper so she doesn't need to sleep that much and she's steadfast so it's harder for her to have a mental breakdown though she is fairly decent i want to get this quest done so we're going to send her out for eight days finally and this is the reason why this episode is taking so long to get out is because i wanted to get to a point where i thought we could do this quest gentle mufflos this dude's going to send us 15 mufflos that are sick with the flu and we have to protect them for two days during those two days we're going to be getting attacked by mechanoids and they're going to randomly drop onto our colony and i think they could literally just drop anywhere so that is a bit scary so after accepting the quest we got a bunch of sick mufflo on our hands now and we're gonna have medical try to treat them all i don't know if the flu will kill them though because like for example caesar's flu is only at 2.9 percent and his immunity is at three if his immunity goes up to 100 percent before the flu then he will survive it although benjamin's flu is at 2.9 and his immunity is at two i think if we just get at least 110 on all these mufflo they should all survive also we were given two pretty heavily armored guards to help us out kazoo's got some really nice gear and this bio-coated hmg which i think means that if he dies and drops it we won't be able to pick it up and use it because it's bio-coated so only he can use it as well as all his armor is locked too. Gilman also has some really nice armor and has a bio-coated chain shotgun. His shooting skill is 5, Kazuya's is 9, and they said we could let these guards die. If they don't die though, I don't know if they'll end up joining us. I think they'll just end up leaving. So yeah, we're gonna have these guys tank for us. And here we go, the mechanoid cluster has arrived. Looks like there's only a couple mechanoids here. Two pikemen, which actually have really long range despite their name sounding like they're melee. A lancer, which has a charge lance, again, a really long range weapon. And then a scyther, which is a melee mechanoid. They got a bunch of turrets though, like an auto charge blaster turret. And they also have this bullet shield. If projectiles are fired into this circle, it will intercept them. So we have to get inside the circle in order to fire at them. One thing I did notice is the bullet shield says it only intercepts ground projectiles and we're actually getting pretty close to being able to make mortars. I don't think the bullet shield can stop a mortar, and so maybe we can just bombard them from our base if we do make mortars. It's gonna take 300 more research for gunsmithing, which shouldn't take us that long, and then 2K for mortars, and we're actually gonna be able to speed that process up as we're making a steel high-tech research bench, which does actually require power, so we gotta build some subsurface conduit close to it. The steel research bench researches at 100%, well, I guess not 100, because the room is not fully clean, and okay, apparently there was some dirt on the ground we had stone clean it we're now researching at 100 percent speed with the high-tech research bench versus the simple one we were only researching at 75 percent well the shuttle finally got here but not before three more mechanoid clusters dropped first we're gonna load up all these muffalo into the shuttle and we are sending this baby away that got us the quest done and now shooting is a knight he needs a nicer throne room with two more columns which we did put in and he also needs a harp which we did research and it just requires 150 wood wolf crafting make him a harp and he will be happy for the most part except for now he won't eat simple meals and speaking of meals we currently have none made these potato plants actually are about to be grown a lot of them are at like 99 percent so we're just gonna harvest this field but nothing will grow anymore because the sun is blocked out by the mechanoid buildings so we're gonna have shooting mining and construction venture out beyond the walls and we're gonna take on these two thrombo or at least we're gonna try and this thrombo did revenge i don't know where it's going though and yeah we ended up killing it that's gonna be a lot of meat a thrombo horn which sells for a lot and thrombo fur which does sell for a lot too and i guess the reason why that thrombo wasn't charging us is because it was leaving this other thrombo is now leaving unfortunately we couldn't kill both of them all right we ended up researching mortar and while all the chaos was going on we had social go out on a trade mission and we had her buy a bunch of chem fuel which cost us about half our silver we're down to 1k now but we bought 300 chem fuel and that's gonna be enough for actually not that many shells it's 15 chem fuel per shell so that should be enough to make us about 20 shells our target is their steel mortar but we're gonna aim for these power cells it should start a chain reaction on the other power cells and hopefully it will blow all them up and destroy this mortar which actually is not tanky it only has 180 hp and here they go we got the mortar that's awesome looks like we almost got the smoke spear too it's down to 11 percent well we got the first smoke spear down now we're gonna aim for this one which we did actually do 200 damage to it on the first hit it looks like we pissed off some scythers and a couple lancers and they're now going for our main choke point 
Wait, mining, what are you doing? Get out of there, dude. He did end up stunning the Scyther with an EMP grenade, and we ended up killing the other two Lancers. And now the Scyther is dead as well. They do have a couple more pikemen coming in, though, and these guys have really long range. I don't really want shooting to be up here in the front either because his armor kind of sucks. Stone is the only one that we have with really good armor. Maybe we'll just have Stone take this thing out with his charge SMG. It's just destroying this pikeman in short range. And yeah, the pikeman's down. After taking out the lesser mechanoids, we do have a bigger mechanoid that is trying to attack us. But we can kite this thing. It doesn't have as much range as Stone. At least not with the charge lance. And so as long as Stone just stays right outside of range of the centipede, she should eventually be able to take it down. These things are extremely beastly as well. I don't think we even have the firepower to take it out the normal way. Nor do we really have the armor. Its heavy charge blaster is really strong. And we cannot tank very many hits of that thing. It fires out a lot of projectiles, like so. Oh, we got a bit too close there. But thankfully, it's not very accurate at long range. And there we go. We finally killed it. Holy cow. It took 26 hits with the charge lance, and that's not even counting the ones that got deflected, because the centipede does have a good amount of armor and randomly would just deflect shots. It looks like that was not the only centipede they were going to send at us. They got one more, and we're going to have shooting take this one. We tagged it through the embrasure. But it cannot shoot us because we are behind the wall. Get it again. Well, oh, we just tinged it. Did no damage. Oh, and there goes calf one. <laughs> well, we can turn that little guy into some meat. And this time we're going to have shooting kite the mechanoid who is in a great mood as stone's mood is very bad. And shooting is actually probably even better than stone right now because he has 19 in shooting. We've had him way longer than stone. And so like even though he doesn't have the Arcotech eye and the Arcotech arm, he's hitting way more shots. I think he's actually hit every shot I've seen him fire so far. Even that one was hit and just tinged off its armor. Another hit, man, he cannot miss. I didn't really go over the mechanics of shooting with run and gun in a situation like this, but it is kind of hard. We basically have to strafe up and down and we can't stop moving because if we do stop moving after we shoot or right before we shoot rather, we can't move until he reloads. But as long as we shoot while we're moving, he will reload while he's moving. And wow, the centipede died after only 18 shots, but we weren't even shooting at it for that long. I think shooting is just way more accurate. We had some visitors come and they exited the wrong way. They are now getting fired at by this auto inferno turret. Oh, and by the way, we did end up killing their smoke spewer. They only have one more building left that's blocking out the light. And once we kill that, we will be able to go crops again. But yeah, these visitors are not having the best time. And there goes Cockroach. I don't think the Blue Cave Treaty is going to be sending any more visitors anytime soon. Oh, and here comes a Royal Tribute Collector. Looks like we might actually not have to clear out this Sunblocker, as I think this Royal Tribute Collector should be able to. Although there is a bullet shield blocking their projectiles. I don't actually know who's going to win this. One of the royal tribute collectors is already down. And yeah, they killed the scyther for us, which is nice. That bullet shield looks like it's impenetrable though, and I don't think these guys are smart enough to go inside of it. And yep, the royals all got killed. They had really good gear too, and it's a shame that we can't get out there and rescue Maurice. If we could, we could steal all of his gear. He's got some nice flat gear. We got another mortar loaded up, and we're going to aim for these power cells. And we finally hit the power cell, which ended up destroying the sun blocker. We now have sun again. Now our crops can grow again, and we will not starve, which is great. With that, we're going to end this super long episode that is taking me quite some time to record, and I did kind of take this weekend off. If you guys are liking RimWorld, then drop a like. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.